Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to continue on with the AC sine wave here. We just discussed uh, the peak voltage and the peak to peak voltage and I've got this little example here uh, where our peak voltage is 170 and our peak to peak voltage is 340 volts. Now there's a couple other things that I want to talk about and that is this. You know, if I was looking at this voltage on a scope and I noticed that the peak voltage was 170, you know, what if I measured this particular voltage with a digital multimeter set on AC, what would it say? You know, would it say 170? Would it say, you know, 340? Or would it say something completely different? Now, if you recall from level two, the AC voltage is not the peak voltage and nor is it the peak to peak voltage, it's just another voltage altogether. It is the voltage that's known as the effective or RMS voltage. Now, if you look at our little formula sheet here, it says E effective is equal to E max times 0.7071. Now, I need you guys to remember that E effective and E RMS are exactly the same thing. All right, guys? So we've got the peak and the max, same thing. They're both this value right here. We've got effective and RMS, or just straight up AC voltage. You know, if I say the AC voltage is 220, I'm talking about the effective or RMS value. Okay, guys? So it's a bit confusing. A lot of names for the same thing. If I say the RMS voltage is 220, if I say the effective voltage is 220, if I say the AC voltage is 220, I'm talking about the effective voltage every time. All right? So you just got to kind of drill that into your head. Three words. All the same thing doesn't matter just remember the formula I'm gonna write it down right over here because it's a formula that we're gonna use you know once in a while E effective is equal to E max times 0 0.7071 and since that's true guys I can calculate the AC voltage if I'm looking at this sine wave and I'm noticing that the voltage at the peak is 170 volts. Let's do it right over here, guys. The effective voltage for this sine wave is going to be the maximum voltage for this sine wave, not the peak to peak voltage. It's going to be the maximum voltage, okay? Times 0.7071. And in this particular case, since our max voltage is 170, and I'm going to multiply that by 0.7071. I'm going to be able to calculate it here. It's going to be 170 times 0 0.7071. All right, guys. And so look, woohoo, 120 volts. All right, 0.2 volts. Now, I need you guys to remember that this is the voltage I would measure if I actually physically measured this voltage with a digital multimeter. Because a digital multimeter, if you set it to AC, is going to measure the effective voltage. Okay, this is supposed to say E effective. All right, guys, I'm gonna say that again. A digital multimeter, if you set it to AC, is calibrated to measure 120 volts. And what that means is, if I go to any receptacle in my house and measuring 120 volts with my digital multimeter on it, that means the waveform that's coming out of that plug is going to have a peak voltage of very close to 170 volts okay and that's just the way it is it's no big deal all right guys so now why do we even bother with the effective voltage i mean isn't it annoying that you have to take the peak voltage and multiply it by 0.7071 to figure out the effective voltage like wouldn't it be better just to call it you know 170 i mean that's what it's peaking at let's call it that well, the reason it exists, guys, is because of this. And I'm going to pull in another piece of paper here. I'm recycling this one, okay? So just don't worry about this for right now. The reason effective voltage exists is because, well, when they first started playing with you know, electricity a long, you know, 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago, all they had was... DC voltage, okay? They had batteries, basically, all right? And so they were screwing around with electricity, thought it was really cool. AC came later, 
And AC came, you know, once they started generating electricity with magnetism, basically, and conductors, all right, whipping our magnetism around. And so they had this system set up for DC voltage, and now they had an AC system where you had a waveform. And what they found was, well, if you took a, you know, a battery, let's say, and connected it to a load. Okay, guys, so here's my load. And let's say this battery was 120 volts DC. It's a nice straight, even line, okay? And just for fun here, we're going to say that this resistor was 12 ohms. Now, we're smart enough to know that we can calculate the current in this circuit here. I is going to be E over R. And so in this particular case, the current in this circuit would be 10 amps, okay? It's going to be 120 over 12, okay? And the other thing we could calculate about this circuit is the power... And the power is the amount of heat. All right, guys, because power is measured in watts. And in a circuit like this, the power is going to be, you know, how hot is this baseboard heater getting, basically. Okay, guys? So the power, if you recall from level one and level two, it's the voltage times the current. And really, it is the amount of work that this resistor is doing. Because heat is work, okay? You can use it to boil water and heat up your house and all kinds of things. It is definitely doing something. It's 120 times 10, okay? So this thing would be 1,200 watts, all right? And that's easy. But once they started playing with AC, well, now we have a whole different system going on here. We got an AC generator, but we're going to connect it to the exact same load here, guys, 12 ohms. And... What they found was, in order to get, you know, 10 amps to flow, and also in order to get the power to be equal to 1,200 watts, okay, they needed an AC voltage here that was peaking at 170 volts. In other words, you know, they whip, you know, they turned up the voltage, down the voltage. They noticed that to get 10 amps to flow and this thing to output 1200 watts worth of work, they needed an AC value or sine wave that was peaking at 170 to do that. All right. And so then they said, well, since this is peaking at 170 and it's having the same effect on this resistor as 120 volts DC, we're just going to call this 120 volts AC, okay? In other words, the effective value, we're going to say it's effectively 120 volts, all right? Which is why I like the term effective voltage better than RMS voltage, okay? RMS stands for root mean squared, guys. It's a mathematical formula. You know, you take the sine wave, you, you know, you plot all the voltages along the waveform, you take a square root of those voltages, then you average that out, and then you square it, and then you get, you know, the same number, okay, 120 volts, okay? But I don't care about that mathematical formula. I want to know, you know, what is its effective value? It's effectively 120 volts if it's peaking at 170. Same as the DC, okay? This is going to have the same effect on that resistor as 120 volts DC would, all right? So that's why it's called effective voltage. And that's also why we just don't call this 170 if it happens to be peaking at 170. All right, we call it 120. All right, guys? So that's why effective voltage exists. And uh, yeah, we just got to live with it, right? Okay, guys? So we've got the voltage there, the, the uh, formula. It's always going to peak, be the peak voltage times 0 0.7071. And uh, it's also going to be the voltage that an AC meter reads. Now I want to talk about one more, uh, two more voltages and I'm going to do that in the next video, okay? So stick around or come right back for the next video on the AC sine wave.